This is a short story about Gregor Johann Mendel, who would later become known as the father of modern day genetics. For a very long time now, people have known that breeding cats gives you kittens. Cats come from other cats and ducks give rise to other ducks. Cats don't give rise to dogs all of a sudden. No, of course not. Dogs don't just suddenly come from cats. Only cats can give rise to other cats. In fact, for a very long time, it was believed that all of the life that was ever going to be around was already formed. In this case, it was thought that tiny humans already existed inside of sperm during a period of time known as preformatism. And all animals came from already formed miniature versions of that animal called animacule that just needed to grow. Somewhere along the line, people began to figure out that some type of information was passed on from parent to offspring. But it was widely believed that traits were blended and that offspring inherited the average traits from its parents. The idea called blending inheritance remained throughout most of the 19th century, but the scientific experiments of Gregor Mendel would change all of that. Mendel was born in 1822 in what is now part of the Czech Republic. He grew up on a farm that had been in his family for over 130 years. On the farm, Mendel learned about gardening and beekeeping, and he began his early formal studies by attending gymnasium. No, not like that. Gymnasium in Opava, which is like an advanced secondary school in certain parts of Europe. Uh, Mendel became very ill at one point and ends up missing four months of his schooling during this period. Mendel went on to study philosophy and physics at the University of Ulamuk from 1840 to 1843. But once again, he gets very ill and has to take a full year off due to his illness. Mendel's family begins to run out of money to send him to college, so Mendel joins a monastery and becomes a monk. While in the monastery, Mendel works as a part-time science teacher and also receives a free education as part of the deal. Mendel tries to move from part-time to full-time teacher, but in 1851 he fails the third and final part of his teaching exam in his attempt to get a full-time job. So Gregor Mendel is sent to the University of Vienna to study physics for two more years, and he returns in 1853 where he teaches physics part-time as well as other sciences. In 1856, Mendel takes his teaching exam once more, but once again he fails the third and final portion of the test. So, in 1856, Mendel continues to teach part-time and in his spare time he uses a small garden plot to conduct his now famous pea plant experiments. Between 1856 and 1863, Mendel would grow nearly 28,000 pea plants and would selectively breed and record the data outcome of particular flower colors, seed colors, and texture. And what Mendel found was that pure breeding purple flower plants when bred with white flower pure breeding plants would always result in purple flower plants in what is called the F1 or the filial generation one. And with a plant with green seed pods when crossed bred with a pure breeding yellow seed pod, uh, one would result in 100% of the plants with green seeds. This was quite different than the blending inheritance model that others had observed at this time. Mendel also noticed these F1 plants were not like the parents or pure breeding plants. Crossing purple with white flowers gave you all purple, but crossing the F1 plants with other F1 plants resulted in an F2 generation that was a three to one ratio of purple flowers to white flowers. So while the white information seemed to disappear in the F1, it reappeared in the F2. Mendel would go on to notice this pattern in seven traits and that these observations were independent of each other, meaning flower color did not seem to affect plant size or seed color. These findings led Mendel to conclude what are now known as Mendel's two laws of inheritance. In the first law, Mendel reasoned that the purple information separated or segregated from the white information when the plants made pollen and eggs. And in the second law, Mendel concluded that flower color was independently assorted from things like seed pod color. One trait was not inherited or connected to another trait. 
This would later turn out to be true only on traits located on other chromosomes, but DNA in chromosomes would not be discovered for almost a hundred years later. Like all good scientists, Mendel published his results in 1866 in an article entitled Experiments in Plant Hybridization. And he gave a talk to about 40 prominent scientists in this area of research. But it appears that Mendel's work did not grab their attention. They didn't seem to quite understand what Mendel was suggesting. Mendel died in 1866, and his work and findings sort of vanished for almost 40 years. Then in about 1900, his work was rediscovered when other scientists in different countries began to unknowingly replicate some of Mendel's earlier work. Although Mendel's work is simplistic by modern genetic standards, you have to realize his discoveries came almost a hundred years before the discovery of the structure of DNA. This is how we interpret Mendel's work now. First, purple flower plants and white flower plants are made up of cells. First, purple flower plants and white flower plants are made up of cells. And within every cell, with a few minor exceptions, each cell contains a nucleus. And the nucleus has DNA, and one set of the DNA comes from each parent. So in general, each plant cell has two copies for each gene, one from the maternal plant, or mom, and one from the paternal plant, or dad. Certain specific sequences of DNA code for the genes that make a particular protein. In this case, the purple flower plant has a DNA sequence that makes a protein responsible for the purple flower in the plant. The DNA differences are shown in blue rectangles. Certain specific, certain specific sequences of DNA code for the genes that make particular proteins. In this case, the purple flower plant has a DNA sequence that makes a protein responsible for the purple flower color in the plant. The DNA differences are shown in the blue rectangles. Since these are the same gene, flower color, but different alleles, we use an uppercase P to represent the purple or dominant DNA sequence and a lowercase P to represent the recessive sequence of DNA. Notice where the DNA is slightly different in the P allele versus the lowercase p allele. Since we started with pure breeding plants, we know that both the purple plant and the white plant are homozygous. The purple plant has two copies of the allele for purple flower and is therefore homozygous dominant. And the flowers that are white we know have two copies of the DNA that code for the protein resulting in white flowers and are therefore homozygous recessive. Notice the slight difference in these illustrated protein structures that result from the transcription and translation process of producing these two different proteins. Now, how do we get the F1 that Mendel saw? Well, the P generation or pure breeding purple plants have two alleles, capital P and capital P and the white have two lowercase p alleles. When each plant goes through meiosis to produce sex cells or gametes, it can only donate one of each chromosome. We use a Punnett square to follow the possibilities. So our capital P, capital P plant, or our pure breeding homozygous dominant purple plant can make pollen or sperm with a big P or a big P. Now we do the same thing with our white plant, which only has a lowercase p and a lowercase p like this. Then we ask, what if one sperm fertilized a specific egg? What would the result be from that? So if the big p and the little p got together, you would get a plant that looked like this, capital P, lowercase b. It would be heterozygous and it would be purple. Then we ask, if one sperm fertilized a different egg, what would the result be? And in this case, you get the same effect. And we continue on doing all the different combinations that are possible. So we do that for all the boxes in our Punnett square, which shows us all of the breeding possibilities. And you'll notice that these all end up being purple flowered plants in the F1, just like Mendel observed. 
Now, what if we crossed these plants, the offspring, the F1, capital P, lowercase p, with another capital P, and lowercase p. Notice both plants are purple, but they are heterozygous and have one of each type of allele. Since purple is dominant over white, the plants phenotypically look like the F1, but genotypically both are big P, little p. Once again, we make our Punnett square based on the possibilities of sperm and eggs that could be made. And we show what would happen if a specific sperm fertilized a specific egg. And you can see that in the F2, the ratio you end up with is three purple plants for every one white plant. Thus, the F2 is a three to one ratio, just as Mendel noticed almost 100 years ago.